Welcome to another Blue Monkey Forensics video. Today, we're going to be talking about the difference between the terminal, the shell, and the console. You may have heard all these terms before and sort of kind of think that they're the same thing, which is probably okay most of the time. But let's take a deeper dive into the exact difference between each of these and why you should care and know the distinctions. For this video, I will be using the Kane 13 Forensics Distro and the Parrot Security OS to demonstrate these concepts. Let's start with the shell, which is basically a program that interprets what the user types into the command line and then acts accordingly. Much like there are different flavors of Linux, there are also different flavors of shells depending on what you're trying to do. So examples you may have heard of are the bash shell, which is the born again shell, the Z shell, the corn shell, the C shell, and then of course PowerShell for Microsoft. Bash was pretty much the standard for Linux systems for many years. It is great for uh, having a command history, the tab completion, and scripting capabilities. Then there is the Z shell, which has been the standard for Mac OS terminals, replacing the Bash shell around 2019 when OS X 10.15, which is Catalina, came out. And then Z shell is also the standard for Kali since late 2020. And Z shell has advanced completion capabilities, spelling correction, and a powerful scripting language. The C shell, uh, it was very popular with the developers back in the day when the C programming language was popular, as it included features designed to make programming and development tasks more efficient. And if you want to know the name of the shell you are running in the command line, you can just type echo dollar shell. And to see the shells that your system supports, you can type cat slash etsy slash shells. Next level up, let's take a look at the terminal as that is the program that we start so that we can get a shell. When you are in a GUI environment within the operating system, you can choose from different terminal programs which gives you a place to type, which is called the command line. In the Kane OS, you have a few terminals to choose from. You have the mate terminal, the UX terminal, and then Xterm. On Parrot OS, you will find one of the terminals gaining popularity, which is tmux. And as you can see, after launching each of these programs, we get a command line to a shell where we can type commands and then see the output from your command. The mate terminal is probably the fanciest of these as you can customize the layout of the windows, the color schemes, the fonts, etc. So basically, a terminal is just a GUI that allows a user to type into a shell. Now let's take a look at a console window. Going back to its origins, a console usually refers to a physical device that allows interaction with the system. You will find that these typically come with a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse. But in modern times, the Linux console refers to the system console, which is the text entry and display device for system messages, uh, particular messages from BIOS, the bootloader, kernel, you know, those kind of things. And because we no longer connect to computers with a physical console, the Linux implementation is now via the virtual consoles. Most Linux distros has six virtual consoles. To switch between them, you can use Alt F1 through Alt F6, right? That will give you access to all six of the virtual consoles. And apparently that's just for Fedora. On an Ubuntu system, you have to add the control key. So you have to do control alt F1, control alt F2, etc. And on Apple hardware, using an Apple keyboard, you have to add one more key, which is the function key. So you have to do function control alt F1, function control alt F2, etc. So let's go to the virtual console associated with F2 on my system. So I'm going to type control alt F2. And then I'm going to execute the htop command just so that I have something running here. And now I am going to go to the virtual console associated with the F3 key. So I'm going to do control alt F3. As you can see, it sort of looks kind of the same as when I did it with F2, right? So that's why I want to run some programs here so you can make the distinction between which of the virtual consoles we're in. So here I'm just going to run the man page for the W command. All right, let's get back to our GUI environment. And we can do that by doing Alt F7 or Control Alt F7, depending on what distro you're using. 
And once again, on Apple hardware, you need to add the function key to get the combo. So it's function, control, alt, F7. So now that we're here back in a terminal window, I want to see what consoles and terminals are active. So I can type the W command. We can see that something that's called TTY7 is running the mate session. So that's the GUI that we've been using. And then we also see TTY3 and TTY2. They're not recently idle, right? Because we just did something with them, right? We ran the HTOP and the man commands. So we just logged into those a few seconds ago. And then we can also see that TTY2 is running the HTOP and TTY3 is running the man command. Or at least it says the pager command because it's showing the man page one page at a time. But we see that TTYs four through six are all idle for about eight days. That's because we've not signed into those terminals yet. So basically the difference between the consoles and the terminal windows is that the consoles are all non-graphical and the terminal windows are all launched within the GUI. And there's two more concepts that I would like to share. Uh, that's of the TTY and the PTS. So TTY is short for teletype and refers to a terminal window that is attached to a system. So to see what TTYs are active, I'm going back to my console number three by typing control alt F3. And so I'm back here where it's the man page. So I'm going to type Q to quit out of the man page. And then I'm going to type WHO, right? The who command. This will basically show us who is logged into the system. The alternative is I can type the W command, which also shows you who is logged into the system. And it also shows what they are doing in the system. And so in this case, you can see that I have TTYs two through seven here. And so to see which TTY is associated with the current terminal window, I'm going to type TTY. And so in this case, I can see that I am typing in terminal that's named TTY3, which is what I expected. And remember seven is the GUI, and then one through six are the ones that we are able to get in on. All right, so from here, I'm going to go back to my graphic view by typing Control alt f 7 because I want to show you another concept. So the other type of terminal besides the teletype that you might have seen is the pseudo terminal slave or PTS. You usually see these when you are connecting to another system via SSH or PuTTY or even a terminal program. So the PTS is essentially a terminal device that is being emulated by another program like Xterm. All right, to see which TTY is associated with the current terminal window, I'm going to go ahead and type TTY. So in this case, we get back slash dev slash PTS slash one. Right, so this is the pseudo terminal number one. And these are distinct from the consoles, right? Those are all TTYs. So anything that I see here in the GUI is going to be PTSs. And what I'm going to do is go back to look at my Parrot OS system. Okay, from here, I'm going to type a W to see who is logged on and what they're doing. So Parrot will show me all the active TTYs and PTS devices. So on this system, I have TTY7, which is our GUI environment. We have TTY1 and TTY2, which are the two virtual consoles I had logged into earlier. And then we have PTS1, 2, and 4, which are the sessions in the terminal window I have here. Uh, and I'm also running Tmux with that. And lastly, from the output of W, we have PTS slash three, which is a remote shell coming from 192.168.1.220. So here's a little fun thing we can do with TTSs. We can actually send messages to specific login sessions. So let's say for this example, I noticed that somebody SSH into my machine on PTS three. And I can go ahead and send them a message, right? So with my other terminal window, I can just do an echo, double quote, get off my machine, end double quote, and then redirect it into slash dev slash PTS3. And once I return, you can see here on top, the window that is PTS3 gets the message, get off my machine. And that's because the device is, is just a file, right? Just like any other file, we can direct and redirect input and output from the command line.
So why does this matter to me? Well, if you're in the forensics or incident response biz, and you come across a Linux machine, you may want to understand the users that are using the system. You might want to know where they're logged in from. You might want to know whether they're logging in from a physical computer, right? You will see those as TTY sessions. Or maybe they are a remote login via SSH, and you will see those as PTS sessions. Knowing how many active terminal and shell sessions are working and what is going on in each one could be critical to your analysis. Hopefully this video has provided you with some insights as to how to go about with your exam of the target machine. So to summarize, if you physically get on a Linux machine and log into it in text mode, you are basically running in a virtual console and you will see these as TTY sessions. If you then launch the windowing system and then launch a terminal program to get the command line, then you are running in a pseudo terminal and you will see these as PTS sessions. And lastly, if you remote log in using SSH, those would be PTS sessions. For more videos on the Linux command line, make sure you watch this video here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.